could see with my eyes, according to their records, they have about 1,000 cows. Um, so it's actually started out very innocently because our, our um, criticism of NFC from the very beginning is not so much about financial misappropriation. We didn't have information back then. What we know was that it was so unfair um, that you award a 250 million project to a family of minister with no background whatsoever in the industry. What we knew back then was that it is not a new attempt. In the 70s, in the 80s, in the 90s, so many other corporations, whether Guthrie, whether Felda, whether Major Ternak back in the 70s, had attempted to do a feedlot, but it didn't work. It's a feedlot business. It's not an easy business. It's a lot easier running an oil and gas company than trying to hurt, uh, um, look after cattle and cows. Um, it, all attempts in the past failed. So we started from there. How was it that a family of ministers was given five acres of land and 250 million without prior experience? Of course, the rest was comical because I went, I went to count, there was no cows. Ministers went to parliament and said, never mind, um, with only 3,000 cows a year is a national success. So. I think what, what um, some people in Barisan Nasional and NFC this did not take into account is that society has evolved. People can no longer tolerate um, abuses and misappropriation. And with today's kind of openness when it comes to, to um, information, and when you have so many people going in and out of NFC, the information is all over the place. And sometimes I think they forget that what they have been doing in the last three years were watched by a lot of people in Malaysia. So um, the moment we, we, we flagged up the fact that there was only 8,000 cows as opposed to 276,000 cows, um, we started getting a lot of information. The rest was us digging and corroborating. There's a lot of investigative work involved. So if I'm out of work after this, I can open up a PI. Um, I can explore a new profession, inshallah. So, but I think, I think what is most important as a society and as a country is this newfound um, confidence for people to come forward and, and disclose information. People are a lot bolder now. Every day now, if you check my emails, I get 10, 15 emails reporting all sorts of misappropriation and asking us to go and investigate. But I couldn't go and count at, you know, all over the place. There are cows missing there, there are goats missing here. Um, but people are a lot bolder now. They come forward, they will send you information. All that we need to do is just corroborate that information. So it's a culture, whistleblowing culture in Malaysia, I think, has, has, has blossomed a lot more than what most people uh, thought we could ever achieve. And, and that goes well for, for the country because I think in, in the future, any um, public office holder, ISA, anyone, um, do not go and spend money, uh, public's money, because people watch and people will come forward and uh, people will disclose anything and people are not afraid anymore. Even in my case, for example, I don't think 100 million suits will shut me up. Because um, um, you can't, you can't. Because how do you stomach something like that? And, and, and I'm talking to you, the UK crowd. I, I was in the UK for quite a while before I went back. And, and uh, things were quite different here compared to, to Malaysia, uh, how do you sum up, for example, you get um, minister's son without hardly any experience whatsoever earning 30 or 40,000 a month when your fellow UK grads going back struggling with 2,000 ringgit? How can you sum up when, for example, we have Orang Asal, we have Ibans and Dayaks in Sarawak and, and Kadazans in Sabah um, earning about 250 ringgit a month and you have these people going on overseas tour 
practically every month. It's something that you can no longer stomach. And that's why I think um, the end is slightly out of touch. And looking at how they have responded, even today and yeah, the last few days, uh, Ibrahim Ali has started coming into the picture rather late, but never mind. Um, and now I think they are trying to pressure the Auditors General to issue a statement saying everything was well and fine. You know? So even with the kind of traction on the ground, and if you go back to Malaysia, you will be surprised. We've been talking about scandals for as long as we were here. And that's what opposition does anyway. Um, but the previous scandals did not have the kind of traction that Lembu has. You go, it's, it's not, I, I, I can't explain it. You talk about uh, 10 billion ringgit in PKF, people don't pay that much attention to that. It's something that is quite far-fetched for them. You talk about the 537 million commission on uh, the submarine. People don't really talk about the underground. But if you go now back to Kampung Kampung, go to Chinese Kopitiam, people make jokes about cows every single day. Somehow cows have traction. And, 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 and I think even with this kind of traction on the ground, BN still has not got it. I, I don't think they realize the kind of anger that people have on the ground. And that's why for every single reaction they have come out so far, is shooting themselves in the foot. So it's jolly good. I think uh, I will continue to talk about cows until the next election. And, uh, and I, I don't think it's going away because um, people can see it. People know they bought condos and in fact there are a few more condos that we have not disclosed. So there will be a few more condos being disclosed after this. And uh, with revelation after revelation, I don't think people will just let it uh, go away. And if Najib doesn't take prompt action on this, I think they will have to pay at the voting post. And it's good for us. Thank you very much.